InfoMaturent at YouTube.com. Welcome back. Our guest is entertainment businessman Corey Todd. And we're talking rum, nightclub, and music. Right here on stage. Corey. So let's talk now about, first of all, um, is the, are the issues with cartel resolved? Are they all behind you now? I mean, when you say issues, what do you mean? The business or? The business issue. Well, you were involved in, in, um, in, in music promotion. And right. you were also invo involved well, in mean, the rum and, and those things. Are they? I mean, are they, these issues resolved now? I mean, I've watched my Legally, that is. I mean, I would think so. I don't see any recourse that can be taken based on the agreements we had. I don't see any recourse. Okay. But I mean, if he wants a legal battle, I'm welcome to it. So there are no outstanding issues as far as you know? Shouldn't be. Okay. All right. Let, let's, let's talk about who you were before Cartel. A little okay. bit about that. Um, mm -hmm. We know you're from the U.S. and you came here um, with a lot of um, experience in, right. mu in music promotion music and, business and so on because yours the last interview we did we, uh, people were asking they wanted more of you for it, uh, <laughs> and now they're getting more of you right. so I want to know a little bit more about you what can you tell us about who you were before cartel well I've, I've my whole life I, I've owned my own business from I was 19 years old I was in a restaurant business I own a couple of franchises um, quiz no subs I don't know if that people seen the commercials the quiz no subs. So I own like three of those um, when I was in the state of Maryland, but I'm from the south, I'm from Mississippi. Um, during that time I used to work with artists doing shows and clubs and promotions and mm -hmm. then I, a, a, a family friend of mine was working with Nelly, so I kind of helped with some of the projects and the distribution of Pimp Juice and um, some of his other products and that's how I ended up in Jamaica because I got tired of the restaurant business. So I, I got out, sold some of the restaurants. Um, I was looking for something to do, the opportunity to come to the Caribbean and um, be the sole distributor for the Caribbean for the product Pimp Juice. So I had a couple of Jamaican friends in the D.C. area, and they said, boy, if you want to bust Pimp Juice, you got to bust it in Jamaica because Jamaica runs the Caribbean. At the time, the only dancehall artist I knew at the time was like Beanie Man, Bounty Killer, Sizzler. And so um, I came here, I didn't know much about the music, and um, I was always in the hip hop and I was working with rappers, but I mean, to do something great with rap would be very hard because everything's been done. You got Russell Simmons, those guys were pioneers to rap music, even though I had my connections in that industry. So when I came to Jamaica and I saw the potential of dancehall, I was like, wow, this could be the next hip hop. This is something where well, I've always wanted to do something big. I said, maybe I should just settle here and I. You know, I like the music and I learned more about the culture and I just sucked it up. I got married and had a child and I just turned Jamaican. <laughs> <laughs> so was it the music or the, 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 the women or the women that, that got you hooked? I mean, it's a combination of everything. I mean, what America cold, you know. <laughs> and I mean, in America right now, I mean, I was a businessman. I had a lot of opportunities there. Well, I mean, America is going through a recession, and sometimes, as a businessman, you have to take yourself out of a, a, a place and, and see where opportunities are. And I mean, a lot of people say, well, Corey getting all these opportunities because he's a foreigner or because he has money. No, I mean, the opportunities are here. It's just people are not taking advantage not, of them. Okay, right. they're not seeing it. They're taking not seeing it taking advantage, advantage of, it. of right. it. How long have you been here now? Um, off and on, the past four years. Four years? Right. And in four years, you've, you've brought... You've built a nightlife product, um, right? A nightclub. Right. You're also involved in the the quad. Right. I'm a partner um, with the quad nightclub. Um, that came about because um, Mr. C Chris Cargill and Ribby, those guys, been in the nightclub business for over 23 years. Mm -hmm. Those are the guys that opened Cactus. Um, Mr. Cargill, he saw something in me w when we were working together, and he said, "You know, this is the guy. I've been in this business long enough. This is the guy I want to." pass everything over to. Mm -hmm. So I mean, because I'm the kind of guy, if I tell you X, or uh, X, you know. Yes. So anytime I made an arrangement with Mr. Cargill, it was always X. Mm -hmm. So w w we developed a relationship and therefore that uh, allowed me to become a, a, a big partner in Quad. So and therefore things just, okay. you know. So the on. new Quad right. is you. Right. I, out of remodeling, 
Mr. Cargill and Ribby, they, you know, we talked about what we wanted to do, but completely remodeled the place. The top floor is finally opening. I'm telling you, it's very nice. Mm -hmm. It's going to be the best looking so club is in all of Jamaica. Yet? When is it, it gonna be? It's going to be a soft opening this Saturday, mm -hmm. but um, in, the, in a couple of more weeks, you'll hear more about it. But it's very, very nice. All right. After our interview mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> recently, um, that interview about Life's Cartel, right. we were bombarded with calls from artists, many, many artists and others mm -hmm. wanting to work with you. Okay. Where are you now? Who are you working with right now? Well, as you can see, being Apart from being, of course, at the room. All right. Um, you know, I'm working with Not Nice because I found Not Nice as a producer. I'm, I told Cartel he needed his own producer to be successful in the music business. So I found Not Nice. So now I, I have a studio. Not Nice is the main producer. I'm working with him trying to build his career. Obviously, I'm working with Javinci. We shot a video yesterday. Um, I'm, I'm in talks with Adonia um, mm -hmm. about doing some helping endorse this product. And also, I'm actually, my plan is to do a whole line, range of dance art products. Okay. I'm not going to just stop with Rome. The rum is just the tip of the iceberg. But the good thing about finally being able to work with Beanie Man, this rum will be international in no time. I've, I've okay. already, because I have contacts and I've told people what I'm doing, I, I got orders for this rum already in Trinidad, St. Kitts, um, even Miami. I mean, just making calls. Oh. So I'm very excited to see where this venture ends up. I mean, Street Vibes did well, but this will do ten times better. How do you distribute it locally? Um, I self-distribute it. I, I know I do a lot of things, but I have good people. Uh, Big up Miss Joanne. She 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 runs the factory, and I got uh, sales reps. They go out and get the orders, and we distribute it ourselves. Mm. Wow! Control it from making it to distributing it. That's what I believe in. So you're more interested in, more focused on making um, dancehall products, well, music. No, products, no, but, no. Let me but, let me tell you, let me tell you what I really want to do, Winfrey. I mean, like I said before in other interviews, in America, money does everything right so what I plan to do is Jamaican music right now the only money that is made is off of tours no VP records it's no real record industry here in Jamaica but the music is very powerful that's why I'm able to make a product like these rums and, and they sell and people want them all over the Caribbean and the Jamaican dis dispatch for, you know okay. where Jamaicans are worldwide mm -hmm. so what I plan to do is develop these products use the, the funds for this to to fund a real dance art industry. When I mean a real dance art industry, that means if I sign an artist, he get videos, he get r money for radio in America, we got videos on BET and MTV. Okay. What I want to do is basically take dance hall to where hip hop was 20 years ago. Because when hip hop first came out, nobody believed it. Let me tell you about American citizens, um, young white American citizens, mm -hmm. all right? They would end up in Jamaica, like the Japanese with backpacks, learning this culture. Yes. I mean, the reason why they gravitated towards 50 Cent is because of his gangster image, and he was shot nine times. I mean, it don't get no more gangster than Jamaica, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I mean, I know the Jamaica tourist board might say, "Oh, that's horrible," and Jamaica they shouldn't portray Jamaica a certain way, and, and that's fine. I mean, we, you can get past that. But at the end of the day, Jamaica needs jobs. Jamaica needs an industry. So, and the music industry is a big industry. Well, what happened in Jamaica is I plan to, to use these funds, sign a lot of artists, and then hip-hop has moved from New York to Atlanta. It is no reason why. What I think about that, I don't know if he is surrounded by enough to actually understand the Jamaican artists, how they think, and to really get past what needs to be done to push them to the next level. Would you work with him if he asked you? Of course. I'm, I'm, but, I mean, the deal would have to you, be right. You seem to be the, the ideal man to partner with him. He's looking to set up, set up a local office here in Jamaica. You would be probably the right man to give the money to and say, go, to, 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 nah. go, 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 go. I need your money, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, money. I don't like to do my own thing. But, I mean, I will work with him, but... I mean, I have an overall vision, and I know I would get there. It, it's sad what happened in the vision because I spent, a, I wasted a lot of time working with a particular artist, and I wish him the best, you know. But it just gotta move on. And I mean, the relationship. Let me tell you something. Um, I want people to know this. With that particular artist, um, for the fans, I'm talking. It's like this. We work 
very hard for the fans to fall in love with him. It's like when a man falls in love with a woman, you know. Mm -hmm. We work very hard for the radio stations and, and the industry to hook him up. Karate. I'm speaking of Cartel. We work very hard for that to happen, right? So what's happening right now is he's doing a lot of strange behavior because of the success or whatever it is, right? So the, the fans are shocked. They don't know what to do. But at the same time, they love this person like you love a woman. Mm -hmm. You understand? So them, them uh, uh, accept it. But Jamaica, we can still save this artist, you know, because what needs to happen is when a woman is doing wrong, you have to let them know, say, it can't work, you know. So Jamaica have to stand up and say, no, you, the girls don't like your hair extension. They don't like your face like that. You understand? We have to stand up because I know we worked hard to make you fall in love with him, and, and, and it happened. But you got to wake up and make him take responsibility for what he's telling the kids. Make him take responsibility for his image and take this music serious. I wish him the best. But let um, me wash my hands. Me draw the line. <laughs> of so what's the plan for the opening of the, the reopening of the of the club? I mean, it's gonna be huge. I mean, Beanie Man's gonna be in concert. Javinci, other so artists. It's a big yeah, reopening party yeah. plan. And then what we're doing on the Saturdays, you know, inclusive Saturday. Well, we have a, we open the building one last time this Saturday, a farewell party for inclusive Saturdays at the building. And then on Saturdays in New Kingston, we call it the takeover. What we'll be doing is you buy one band from either Quad or you buy it from Club Rhythm. And if, you, if you're in Club Rhythm, you're in, in, enjoying the hardcore dance hall vibes and you get a ping from your, 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 one of your friends and they're in Quad enjoying some reggae and, and house music mm -hmm. and hip-hop, you could just come out, of, come out of Rhythm and walk over to Quad. So, I mean, we just taking over all of New Kingston on a Saturday night. We cut the price for ladies. It's only $500 and you drink free yard swag all night. And a thousand dollars for meals. So just to take over the place we're <laughs> Yeah man. So good course, John. Yeah, man. Thanks again for coming through and talking to us right here on stage for the second time around in just one month. You wanna see me for a while, you know. <laughs> I mean I like the camera, you know. Alright. All right. So that's our show for this week. You join us again next week for more on stage. Infomus at youtube.com.